Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're back with a tier list video for August. These are one of my favorite types of videos. I love to talk about the meta and what the matchups currently look like. And we've just gotten some pretty good results from Birmingham that we're gonna go over. The tier list looks quite a bit different than uh, my July predictions before we really had much data from Dusk Till Dawn. So now we've had uh, two or three Battle Hardens and a Calling. We've been able to see the meta at least cement a little bit. And I'm excited to go over the changes that we've had, right? So just taking a quick look at the meta we had before, um, this was my July tier list. We had Lexi and Dromai up here in S tier. Uh, I was kind of betting on Leviah up here in A tier with Azalea. I had a pretty decently big B tier with most of the heroes. I thought the only heroes that were going to underperform were Arachne, Riptide, and New Prism. And then I had a pretty decently sized C tier as well with the uh, Icelander in this tier. Um, so you can probably guess my biggest prediction um, that didn't go quite right was Icelander in C tier. Um, I know she's won quite a few events. I don't think winning events is really that significant. I think win rates over events is a little more important. Um, but despite that, she still has had a pretty decent win rate compared to what I would have expected as well. Um, and I think Levia did a bit worse than I expected her to. Um, and so those are kind of the two biggest things. Obviously, there's a lot of other shifts in the tier list. Looking at the tier list for this month, you'll notice it's quite a bit different already with a much smaller B tier, a shift in the S tier, and um, a yeah, much bigger C tier down here. Um, so let's take a quick look. First, in S tier, I th we have uh, Lexi still hanging out in S tier, still probably the best hero in the game. And then Bravo moving up to S tier. Um, he did quite well over the weekend. He put the most of any class or of any hero into the top eight of Birmingham. Um, and he was not the most represented hero. So he converted quite well into top eight and he even converted quite well into um, the rest of the event. Um, I do have this matchup data here from Birmingham. Um, and so just based on win rates, you can see only two heroes have, you know, this dark green coated win rate. Uh, where it's like, you know, 54% or higher. Um, we have Bravo, who had the second highest win rate with 54.79, so almost 55%. And then we have Lexi with 56.29%, so just over 56% win rate. Um, the two heroes that performed best. Obviously, Lexi did not convert into a top eight performance, um, but I'm sure she's a lot of the top 32. And just because the hero doesn't make it into the top eight, I mean, eight is a pretty small amount out of the whole field. She still did the best out of any class or any hero the whole weekend. So uh, I'm putting those two heroes in S tier. They both did the best uh, based on win rate there. And they seem to be in a pretty good spot. Um, Bravo got some really good new tools with Starstruck and uh, now playing the Steel Blade Bruck Buckler um, as his one of his main loadouts into any of the aggro decks seems to be helping him a lot. Um, he had a maybe slightly hard Lexi matchup before, um, but with Bullseye... Bracer's bands and Starstruck being added to his toolkit, I think it swung from maybe a 40% win rate to Bravo to a 50% or higher for Bravo. Um, so I think he's in a good spot in the meta overall now. And Lexi's still just probably the strongest hero in terms of power uh, of her cards. I mean, she's got Codex of Frailty, Voltaire, Three of a Kind, Rain Razors. She's just got the most powerful cards in the game full stop. So um, she's still the the probably the best deck if you want to take to an event and win it, um, despite what recent results may have shown, her win rate is the best. Um, looking at A tier here, uh, in the A tier before, we had Leviah and Azalea. This time, we still have Azalea. She still did pretty good. Um, this A tier is kind of based on these uh, light green win rates here, so the hero is still over 50%. <clears throat> Excuse me, all at 52%. We have Azalea, Icelander, and Azuri. Um, so Icelander moves up quite a lot, obviously, from C tier she was in before. Azuri moves up from B tier where she was before, so up one tier. And then Icelander stays, uh, or sorry, Azalea stays where she was. Um, basically, the two heroes that aren't Icelander in this tier have a very good win rate into Lexi. So I'm sure I can scroll down here and see. Azalea actually didn't have a good win rate into Lexi, which is a bit of a surprise. But Azuri had a 71% win rate into Lexi, which I think has to be the best. Um, yeah, it has to be by far the best uh, win rate into Lexi over the event. I'm actually surprised Azalea didn't have a better win rate. I thought uh, she might be higher, but 
overall, she still had a pretty good win rate until a lot of the other aggro decks. She beat Briar a lot. She beat Dashes. She beat Dorinthias, Fies, Kanos, Katsus, Leviathan. I mean, she she was pretty good into a lot of the field. She also got dunked on by Azuri. So Azuri is just really, really good into the Rangers, um, as you can see by the 71% win rate in Telexi and the 83% win rate into uh, Azalea. Also had an 80% win rate into Dash. So it has some really swingy, massive win rates into some of the field, um, which is just enough to put her in A tier. Azalea is doing good. And then obviously Icelander has won multiple of the last events. Um, and just seems to be a lot stronger than we expected. I think the meta is a bit slower than expected. The Bullseye Bracers ban plus Oldham leaving has really slowed the meta down. Um, and it's able to, you, you're able to use the Wounded Bull strategy to still get a ton of value. Whereas before it was maybe a little too slow for the previous meta where she was not seeing as much success. Um, looking at the next tier. B tier is most of these heroes that are around 50% win rate, um, and then maybe a little bit of personal opinion, but you know, we got 49 for Dromai, 48 for Dorinthia, um, you know, that range of, of win rates here. Um, obviously, I do have some personal opinion in the tier list as well, but uh, we have Dromai. She dropped quite a lot. I had her in S tier before, so she went down two tiers. Uh, Dromai, I thought, was going to be really well positioned into Lexi over the weekend. Um, but you can see her Lexi win rate here was 43%. So Dromai is not beating Lexi consistently where I thought that was a really good matchup for Dromai. Um, and so that kind of knocks her down a lot. The reason I had her in S tier is because I was really thinking her Lexi matchup was great and it ended up not being so great. Um, and she just doesn't seem to perform as well as I ever expect her to. She seems really strong on paper. The dragons seem really powerful. And she just never ends up converting that way. So she's a little down um, from where she was before. Dorinthy is up a tier here, up into B tier from C tier. <laughs> uh, I think that's mostly because two reasons. One, I think her toolkit is just quite strong. Um, if you're on Dawnblade, you're still going to do great. Um, it's, it's a pretty powerful card, and it's good into a lot of aggro races. Um, but also the new Decimator Great Axe build is quite powerful. It's really, really strong. It can fatigue a lot of decks. Um, and it just, it's just really good. I mean, the weapon attacks for four every turn. And uh, if they're blocking with one card, they can only block for two most of the time. So um, they're going to be taking two damage every turn, basically, until they die, um, which is quite good. So uh, Dorinthia is doing quite good. And then Katsu seems to be, um, outside of Lexi here, seems to be the strongest aggro deck. You'll notice almost none of these other decks are aggro decks. They're like disruptive, 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 setup, and then eh, I'm maybe mid-range or aggro, I guess you could say for Dorinthia, but Katsu is kind of the second best aggro deck after Lexi. He's got a lot of really good on hits. Bonds of Ancestry line is still fantastic, and um, he is maybe one of the better plays into Icelander out of all of the aggro decks. He's also probably the most resistant to um, Warmonger's Diplomacy, which has been a huge hit against the Rangers and against Runeblades. Um, that Majestic from uh, Deskal Dawn is a fantastic Majestic. It's definitely the next uh, Command and Conquer E-Strike. And um, yeah, it's really good, especially into certain heroes like Runeblade and a Ra Ranger. And it, if it's not good in the matchup, it's still a blue three block. So. It's never that bad. Um, then you can see we have a lot of heroes down here now. It looks like the meta is kind of condensing into maybe the best eight heroes here. Um, obviously, you can bring any hero to an event, especially if you know them really well. But a lot of these other heroes have gotten knocked down. You can see we had a bunch in B tier before, and a lot of these B tier heroes have either, either moved up, like uh, Bravo up to S tier and Zuri up to A tier, or a lot of them have moved down to uh, C tier here. Um, you know, we can see Leviah all the way down here from A tier. The Rune Blades I moved down a tier because Warmonger's Diplomacy just hit them pretty hard. Um, Phi is not performing as well as I expected. And um, we also have Dash down here and Reinar as well as Kano. Uh, a lot of these were in C tier. A lot of these moved down one from B tier. Once again, you can um, look at this win rate chart. A lot of these are like the lower 40%, like Dash at 42%, Bravo at 
Briar at 46%, Fi at 46%, Levi at 44%. A lot of these lower end win rates here. Um, and then D tier is the heroes that just absolutely ate it. Um, I had Bolton pretty high before, I think. Yeah, I had him all the way up in B tier, and he just was way worse than I expected. And then I had Vincent in C tier, and she didn't do great either. So seems like the Dusk Till Dawn heroes aren't doing great. Three of them in D tier right now and one in C tier. They might just need to be solved still. But if you look at it, Vincent, only 35% win rate. Prism, 26. Bolton, 37. I mean, these heroes weren't winning any games. Um, and then we also have Riptide played two games and won neither of them. So obviously not a great showing there. And then Arachne didn't even show up to the event. So, um, so bad that no one even was willing to bring him. He's just so much, or they are just so much worse than Azuri. It's crazy. Like Azuri is just by far the better assassin. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the reason Arachne's down there. Overall though, um, I'm personally happy with how the meta's developed. Bravo is obviously my favorite hero, so I'm never mad to see him doing so well. Um, and I think the meta looks pretty fun. I think any of these heroes are in a pretty good spot right now. Um, I'm a little worried for the future of Runeblade. Um, Runeblade is usually a pretty strong aggro deck, and Warmonger's Diplomacy has been a little more oppressive than I expected. Um, I think I really wish some of the Dusk Till Dawn heroes were doing better. I would have loved to see Levaya actually be an A-tier hero. Bolton be a lot stronger, and they just don't seem to be um, converting as much as we expected. Um, nothing else is a huge surprise. I mean, like I said, the Rune Blades I wish were doing a bit better. I wish some of the Dusk Till Dawn heroes were doing a bit better, but um, Kano, Fi, Dash, Ryanair have been in C tier for quite a while now. Riptide, Arachne, um, Bolton have all been in D tier for a long time. So most of those aren't a surprise, but. You know, Runeblade had been a bit higher, B or A tier for a while now, and um, they just don't seem to be, uh, they don't seem to be able to handle the Warmonger's Diplomacy too well. We actually had Viserai at 50% win rate, so according to what I was putting everything at, he should have been in like, uh, you know, B tier at least. Um, the reason I put him in C tier is I just, I don't know, I still think he's pretty weak to Warmonger's Diplomacy. Maybe that's personal opinion getting in the way too much, but... Um, overall, meta looks pretty good. Um, I think there's still quite a lot of adapting that's going to happen um, before anything else, you know, before the next event even. there's You can play a bunch of red immovables in your deck to beat Bravo. You can play more blues to beat Icelander. Um, there's plenty of adapting that can be done in decks. People might start cutting the Warmonger's Diplomacy just because the threat of it is enough a lot of the time. So we'll really see. Um, but overall, yeah, this is the meta for August. Uh, Icelander, I expect to continue to do well until people can solve out quite how to beat here, beat her. Um, if we look at her matchups here, her worst matchups seem to be Dash, where she had a 33% win rate into Dash, Katsu with a 45%, Lexi with a 35%, um, which is what I expect. I mean, Lexi is probably her worst matchup, Reinar with a 33%. Um, so Lexi, I sh expect to continue to be the best deck people are going to keep just bringing more icelander and um you know icelander is not good into lexi the, the icelander that won the calling only played one lexi the whole event despite her being by far the most played deck so sometimes you can just get lucky and not roll into the most played deck even when it's one of your um one of your worst matchups um bravo does seem to have his place in s tier because of his lexi win rate he has a 57 percent win rate into lexi which is White high, obviously not as high as Azuri's, but he has a better matchup into a lot of the rest of the field. Um, but yeah, I think if you're trying to beat Lexi right now, I would bring Bravo or Azuri, probably the two best decks that beat Lexi. Um, if you're trying to beat a lot of the rest of the field and you don't want to play Lexi still, I would play Azalea or Icelander. And if you just want to play the best deck, I would probably play Lexi. But thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Leave your own opinions in the comment below. I would love to hear what you guys think of this tier list, what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.